This is a, an IHS um, forecast for the luxury car sector that's uh, going out to 2019. And there's a couple points that we want to make from here. So the ILX um, uh, lives in the, in the bottom segment there in the blue. It's the near premium segment where ILX is, uh, cars like the CLA, the Mercedes CLA, the Audi A3. It's not the biggest segment by far. Um, that definitely is the TLX class or the 3 Series or other, uh, other uh, vehicles one size up live. But it is a critical, critical uh, segment that, that we are um, really glad to be in and, and, and frankly one of the uh, kind of uh, founders of the sort of the, the modern iteration of this segment um, for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a growth segment and, and that will continue and a lot of that's spurred by new entries and a lot of that's uh, just spurred by kind of organic interest in the segment. But more importantly, it's a feeder segment. And, and so for us and with any luxury brand, um, loyalty is, is critical and, and luxury buyers, uh, more, more so than mainstream buyers, are very prone to find a brand they like and then just stay in it for, for a lifetime basically. And as long as we can successfully provide them with, with vehicles in our hierarchy that, that, that are the next step for what they want or the next step for their life stage, uh, then we can keep great customers for life. And ILEX is critical for that, of course, on the, on the car side for us. And one of the big changes um, uh, that, that we're trying to address uh, with this, with this uh, 2016 ILEX is, is sort of a little bit of a shift in the market. And when we planned this vehicle, it was, it was literally the, the, the beginning or the heart of the, uh, of the recession, 2008 to 2009, I'm talking about the 2013 version of it. And, and there were some assumptions that we made about, about the, the kind of financial uh, kind of uh, uh, sort of options that Gen Y was gonna have, uh, some assumptions we made about how important fuel economy would be, and some assumptions we made about where the market would be. And there's some important shifts that happened. One of those shifts um, is, is, is the vehicles below this car, right? So there's the mainstream vehicles like the Civic, the Focus, and the Mazda 3. And as we've all seen in the last few years, those vehicles have made a significant move up. Uh, some of it's in terms of price. I mean, now all of a sudden you can buy close to $30,000 or more than $30,000 uh, mainstream compact cars. But not just that, in terms of styling, in terms of features, in terms of dynamics, across the board, improving. And of course, the other thing that happened was, was the real emergence of this segment. And, and, and vehicles like the A3 sedan, the CLA, both of which launched in the last 18 months or so, uh, coming and, and kind of establishing a little bit clearer what the segment would be. And it kind of, we found ourselves a little bit in too much in the middle between the two segments. And, and, and that's a lot of what we're trying to address today. So it's, it's moving away from the mainstream compact cars and clearly um, establishing ourselves as a part of that, that true luxury segment where we think we have a very, very good chance to compete. And uh, Mike already alluded to this, um, of course, this, this number that we're quite proud of, the fact that we have such a high percentage of, of millennial buyers. Uh, and that's something we definitely want to continue uh, with this 2016 models. And these are interesting buyers. Um, uh, I wish I was a little closer to them in age. I feel like I am still, but um, I've now moved quite a long, quite past, quite a ways past this. But um, uh, but these are very discerning buyers, uh, looking for all of the luxury attributes that any luxury buyer is, and frankly, in some ways, more picky than, than baby boomer buyers. Right? It has to have it be stylish. It has to have high performance. It has to have all the features. But then, of course, there's just the reality of their life that they're they're fairly young. Um, they're not making you know 200 grand in most cases, and they've got some limitations. And so, providing them a car um, uh, or a truck. Uh, that, that meets their needs, that, that meets their heart as well, um, is tricky. And, and obviously you have to make some real careful decisions about, about what, you, uh, what you invest in. And, um, and, and I think uh, there's a real opportunity to find that, to find that perfect balance. And so we're, uh, we're quite proud of what we have with this vehicle. We think it's really pretty right on. 